What I wanted to de uh, demonstrate right now is a technique for um, measuring the varroa mite levels within a beehive and it can also double up as an excellent surveillance technique to determine if a hive has an infestation of varroa mites. It's called a sugar shake. Now what I've done is taken the queen excluder and the, bee, the uh, honey super off the top and the lid and put it sideways in front of the hive. Um, there tends to be a lot more adult varroa mites on the nurse bees in and around the brood chamber than there are in the field bees or in the bees in the top boxes. <coughs> so I'll just give this hive a little bit of a puff of smoke and remove one of the brood no frames. What we need is a couple of hundred bees. I'll just have a quick look to see if there's any uh, queen on this brood. I don't see her. A couple of hundred bees probably equates to, um, as a queen cell, I might just put that back in there. Don't want to shake her, it might damage her. Okay, no queen. So I'll just prepare the jar. Put it up here so we can readily see it. And I've got the newspaper here in front of the hive. So any other surplus bees can crawl back into the hive. We'll just shake some bees. Got to be reasonably quick with this technique, otherwise the bees will just fly away. Pour them into the jar. That's probably sufficient. An inch, inch and a half, five, six centimetres of bees. Put the lid on, the lid's got a grid or a screen on there, and the holes are at least three millimetres to allow the mites to fall through. So we'll leave those bees there for a second. Now what I've got here is a white powder, it's just uh, icing sugar. Icing sugar mixture is probably better because uh, it doesn't clump up as much as icing sugar, pure icing sugar itself. So I put a clump or a large spoonful of icing sugar on top, just tap it down. I'll just put a little bit more. That's plenty. So what we do is, it's called a sugar shake method, but it's also a sugar roll. You don't want to shake the bees violently, so if we just roll the bees around like this for about uh, a minute. We can leave it for about a minute like that, and then we can come back and roll it again. This technique works particularly well when the weather's warmer. When the weather's very cold, the mites don't tend to release from the bees very well. The idea of this technique is the fine sugar powder, the fine crystals get in between the mite and the bee and irritates the mite and the mite releases from the adult bee. Now we can shake that out onto a mat and see what mites are there but they could be covered in the, the uh, fine sugar. Another way is to get a bucket of water like this and we turn it upside down and just shake the, uh, the powder and any mites that perhaps are in that jar as well into the bucket. And the idea is the sugar dissolves more or less instantly, leaving any mites lying on top of the water. So it makes it very easy for us to do a mite count. And based on how many mites we might find doing this technique, depends whether we go ahead and do a treatment or not, or in this case, whether we've got mites in Australia. So I've, I can't see any mites in the bucket. The mites are fairly obvious. They're, they're about the size of a sesame seed. Um, now I've finished with the bees. I do like this uh, technique as compared to other techniques because it's non-destructive to the bees. And I can release the bees back into the hive. And the other bees there will clean those, the powder, the sugar powder off those 
bees and they'll be quite clean and active members of the hive by this afternoon. It's a very efficient means of, a very simple means of uh, monitoring mite levels in a beehive. So I'll just give a bit of smoke to push them down and put the hive back together again.